Um, but the reason I want to do the x-ray is I'm seeing this weird soft tissue structure on ultrasound. Um, and that is what this is, um, which is abnormal. Yeah, it's big too. Yeah. So when we're looking at a reptile x-ray, um, the hard part is since they don't have that diaphragm, everything's just on top of each other. So this is our heart. And this is actually our stomach. But the thing is, though, our stomach doesn't usually live there. Our stomach is usually down here. What? But whatever this is, is pushing things up. And I'm guessing that's why we feel uncomfortable, because something abnormal is here. Um, it could, it's not something that she could have ate? It's quite large. Um, no, I don't think it's something she could have ate. I, what I was worried about, I, I was thinking, what could be on the floor that when she got out? And my cat uses those pellets, the little white pellets. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's the only thing I could think of that she would have okay. ingested. It might be these little specks we're seeing, but this is like this big. Oh, oh. Yeah, my it's goodness. it's quite large. Um, so at oh, first, I thought they were her fat pads on ultrasound. So reptiles have, they don't carry fat in their under their skin and stuff like mammals do. They have actual structures in their bellies. So they usually have one that goes here. And they have one that goes here. But fat doesn't usually show up this bright on x-ray. Fat is this color. So this is likely her fat pad, and this is her fat pad. And then this structure, I'm not sure what it is. Wow. Um, I have lots of ultrasound images of it, um, and I'm going to show them to Dr. Corcoran. Um, I misunderstood his schedule. He won't be here till tomorrow night, but on Thursday, um, you guys can come back in and we can do an ultrasound because uh, neither him and I are here on Wednesday. She's going to be all right till Thursday. We gave her fluids. We're going to give her pain meds, the tramadol, and then we're going to give her an assist feeding formula. Um, and if you would rather her come in earlier, I can see if he's here on Wednesday. I, I don't think he is. Um, but that the next step would be having him review these images and what I can do too I'll go ahead and send him what I have and okay. see what he says the hard part with ultrasound though Unless you're the one actively doing it. It's hard to interpret someone else's images right. um, But I will send him everything we have and um, I'll give you a response by tomorrow morning on what his thoughts are um, But I am concerned just in general about the structure um, yeah. Not a tumor right that it, it could be. Possibly. It could be a tumor. Um, it could be a granuloma. It could be a, which is an old abscess. Um, granuloma, you said, right? Correct. Oh. Um, but everything is just being pushed away from it. Um, and then when we look at the image on her side here, like something is just big right here. So her head is this way and her yeah, bum is this yeah. way. This is most likely GI tract. This right here is liver, this little like gray area. Um, but this doesn't belong there. Um, and the question just is, what what is it and what can we do about it? I'm anticipating the next steps, if we want to go forward, would be taking a sample of it. Um, and there's two ways we can do that. Um, one is we give her a little bit of sedation. And with our ultrasound probe, we guide a little teeny tiny needle into this structure. We take a couple cells from it, put it on a slide. And we send it off to a pathologist to look at. Um, the hard part with that is if you think of it kind of like a puzzle, that's just grabbing a couple pieces and trying and hoping we can figure out what the puzzle is. Worst case, most invasive way that would be the next step would be a, a surgical explore. Now I'm not saying we need to go and do that tomorrow, um, but I do think that might be where we are headed. But before we do anything more drastic and invasive, I would like to get a specialist's opinion on the case. Okay. Jeez. Can I get a picture of that? Oh, image? yeah. And I can email you guys the actual digital copy as okay. well. Cool. Um, but whatever works for you. Um, and the same thing with the ultrasound images. I can email you guys a digital copy. Okay. Um, but Look at her poor toes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her <laughs> little missing toe there. Um, but I mean, she's been a trooper all day. We have all your meds good to go. I'll just get a technician to go over everything with you guys. Um, but how much more would it be to keep her here? Keep her here overnight. Mm -hmm. um, so I can get you an estimate for that. That would be um, like her boarding here. Actually, since she's not up to date on her fecal, it would have to be like baseline hospitalization where we just give her her meds, we get vitals on her. I can get you guys a quote for that. 
um, but he won't be here until earliest Wednesday morning. Um, so she would have to stay here tonight mm -hmm. and tomorrow, um, and we can go from there. But I can eat you a, a quote for it if you're interested if in it's not too here. much, I would, you know, I feel like you guys could monitor that better than me. But better under yeah. your care. Of course. I, I mean, if it's 100 bucks a day, then I'm already spending over a thousand Yeah, hours. I think it is around there because we do yeah. also have to do an exam every 24 hours legally. Um, so it does add up, um, and I definitely understand, you know, the concern. I might get her a, a smaller area to put her in for the couple. She's not running around anywhere. She's sure. just hiding under a rock sure. where he fed. And, um, mm -hmm. so it sounds like you want to take her I'll home thing? Her, okay, yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Um, so we'll get you guys those meds. The good thing is... The tramadol she's getting put on, that's the pain medication that I see reptiles feeling the best on. One of my kiddos has a chronic condition and he um, just so much better on it. It's like night and day. So hopefully it makes her feel better. Um, we give her her fluids because of that high uric acid level. So hopefully it makes her feel a little bit better. Um, but I am concerned about what exactly that is. Um, but I'll send everything to Dr. Corcoran. Um, he's usually very quick at getting back to us. And I'll shoot you an email or a phone call tomorrow, um, tomorrow morning, um, to see if he has any other thoughts. But um, I do think we might be getting to more invasive tests at yeah. this point. Taking a biopsy, if, if he thinks after he looks like at it, you might know if it's something that would be better to just do something invasive rather than puncture puncture it if it is cancer correct so. so the the pros and cons of like the cytology which is when we do the ultrasound and we poke it through the belly with a little needle it, we don't have to open her up she doesn't have to be under general anesthesia but there's no guarantee we're going to get a definitive diagnosis off of that um the most uh, beneficial information route would be opening her belly up and taking a look the other thing we could always consider doing is this fancy expensive machine, uh, the CT. Um, <laughs> CTs are great, but they require them to be under immobilization and um, they're almost as expensive as a surgery. And the, the pro of going in surgically, if it's a mask, while we're in there taking a sample, you just take it out uh, if we can. Um, so the big question just is, is what is this? Um, we can do all of the pre-surgical testing in the world. We could do a cytology. We could do a CT. It sounds a lot for a lizard. Yes. I, you. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> that is the other big thing to consider too. At any point, like one, what are we going to do with the information we find? Like, are we wanting to pursue surgery? Are we wanting to go down that route? Because if we're not, we don't have to keep doing all of this. Yeah. The other question is, you know, yes, we can do all of these things, but should we do all of these things? We have to think of, you know, her as a whole and not just the problem list that she has. Um, so it'll give us some time to ruminate on all this information tonight. Um, and you guys can kind of maybe have a better idea of what you'd be willing to do moving forward. Um, and I will see what his thoughts are on the case and we'll just kind of take it step by step. The important thing is she'll be on pain meds, she has hydration for today, and we're going to get her some nutritional support. So that is all, we're covering all of our bases on palliative care, um, and at the end of the day, I just want her suffering to be as minimal as absolutely possible, um, and that's what we're going to we're gonna be doing for her. How long will the tramadol last for? That lasts about 12 hours, so I'll have you guys give it once in the morning and once at night, um, and we'll show you how to give it to her. Okay, let's do that.